if you want a history lesson this morning, in 1784, when this church, the denomination that we are in, was first founded, it was not, it was not, a, it was not allowed. In 1784, long before the Civil War, it was not allowed for a person to become a member of this church if they were a slaveholder. Did you know that? In 1784, you couldn't be a member of the denomination if you were a slaveholder. But because of the pressure of the culture and the society, guess what happened just a few years later? They said, well, we'll make allowance for it so we can win souls. In other words, so we can get more people. They compromised. They gave in to the pressure of the culture. They compromised. And eventually the church is split over the issue. That's why we have a Wesleyan church today. The Methodist church, then you have all sorts of split-offs. And then the Methodist church eventually split in the Methodist Episcopal Church North and South. And that was long before the country ever went to the bloodiest war this nation has ever seen. The church has led the way. I'm sorry I'm spitting on people this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me, brother. Hopefully it's Holy Spirit. I don't know. <laughs> the church has led the way to this craziness. The bloodiest battle that this nation has ever seen, the bloodiest war this nation has ever seen, more people killed in that war than all of the other wars that we've ever fought combined. And the churches led the way in the split and we're doing the same thing today. We're compromising. We're giving in to the culture. We say we need to get prayer back in schools, but are we really going to look to the government schools and the government politicians to do what the church of Jesus Christ should be doing? Listen to what this guy said in 1983 in the Humanist Magazine. He said this, this will explain a lot. This will explain a lot of the crazy things, the stuff that you just shake your head at when you hear these stories. The stories of where a little a boy in a kindergarten class wants to draw a picture of a cross and the teacher says, no, you can't do that. Where they want to ban the colors during Christmas season. They want to ban the colors red and green. Because we can't even have even, even people even remember at all that this is a Christian holiday. Even with the colors red and green, which are not necessarily, that's Santa Claus stuff. It's not really Christian necessarily. But we can't even remind people. School districts banning. A girl getting up to give a speech as a valedictorian, the top in her class, and she mentions the name God, and they cut the mic off. What is happening in our universities in the last several weeks? Universities, Duke among them, Davidson. Elon led the way, I think, on this. Kicking Chick-fil-A off of their campuses because of the views of the, the president of the company who believes that marriage should be between a man and a woman. And now that's considered to be hate speech and hateful. And the people who believe that like, and support that doctrine or those ways of thinking, they're considered to be Nazi-like people. They're considered to be in hate groups today. Our young people are voting for that. Now, I don't know, whatever you think on that, that issue, that's wrong. That's not about tolerance. There's no tolerance at all in that position. Now, I don't know if I'm right or wrong about this, but I wish the government would just get out of the marriage business altogether, and I think all these problems would go away and just leave it up to individuals and churches to decide how they want to define it. Just get the government out of it. But we continue to think the government is the solution to all of our problems. This may explain some of this craziness. I am convinced, this is a guy named John Dumpy. This has been passed around and quoted many, many times. And he stands by it today. I am convinced that the battle for humankind's future must be waged and won in the public school classroom by teachers that correctly perceive their role as proselytizers of a new faith, a religion of humanity that recognizes and respects the spark of what theologians call the divinity in every human being. 
The classroom must and will become an arena of conflict between the old and the new and the rotting corpse of Christianity together with all its adjacent evils and misery. I've been telling you folks since I've been here that people out here don't just think Christianity, traditional Christianity, is just silly. They think it's evil. And that's what this guy said in 1983. And this kind of thinking was around a lot longer before that. The classroom must and will become an arena of conflict between the old and the new and the rotting corpse of Christianity together with all of its adjacent evils and misery and the new faith of humanism resplendent with the promise of a promise of a world in which the never realized Christian ideal of love thy neighbor will finally be achieved. Now, he, the rotting corpse of Christianity, you know, that, that's pretty smart in a devious, demonic way. Just a couple of years ago, there was a big push, there was a big television program that came out on the Discovery Channel or something like that, where they said, we have found the tomb of Jesus. See, Jesus is still dead. You people are crazy for worshiping this guy. And it was all a bunch of bum. Malark. Whew, I'm mad today. We've got, we've got to start looking within. We've got to start looking at making sure the church is Christian before we worry about the Christian nation. We've got to make sure we're praying in here. We, get, we need to get off of Facebook maybe and get on our face. And seek God's face. Second Chronicles chapter seven verse fourteen, a message to the people of God at that time. If it said, "If my people," see, we think if we could just get those crazy people out there straightened out, everything would be okay. But what we need to do is get our crazy selves in here straightened out and work out it's from the inside out. If my people, who were called by my name, will humble themselves. Humble themselves. Humility. Surrender to the will of God. Humble themselves and pray. If my people will pray and seek my face and change their evil ways, then I will see and I will heal. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. It's not going to be top down. It's going to be bottom up. Inside out. From within out. It's up to us. Now Timothy. Paul talks to Timothy about his faith in God. His great faith and how he has known the Scripture. The Word of God. He's known the Word of God from a child, he says. And how the Scriptures have the power of salvation for the soul. How did Timothy know the Scriptures? Was it because the teachers at the public schools gave it to him in his day and time? Is it because Caesar taught him the Scriptures? Who taught Timothy the Scriptures? Chapter 1 tells us it was his mother his grandmother. The faith, Paul says, the faith that once lived in them, now I know for sure lives in you. They had a living faith in them. We talk about voting the Bible. We need to read the Bible first. We need to study the Scriptures. We need to get into the Scriptures and let the Scriptures, the Holy Word of God, get into us and change and transform our hearts so we have a true and a living faith that we can then pass on to our children. Because you can't pass on something you don't have. You can't pass it on. That's going to change the culture. That's going to change hearts. That's going to change lives and change minds and deliver people from the destruction and the chaos that we see in this world. We can't look outside up there. We've got to look here and pray and seek God's face. Maybe get off of Facebook, like I said. Not all the time. I like Facebook. But get 
get on Facebook a little bit and get on our face. And see God's face. Maybe quit listening to, to Rush Limbaugh and Glenn Beck like I do too much. Or Rachel Maddow who I listen to also. She's on the other end of the spectrum. Or Chris Matthews. I listen to all of them because I've just gotten you know, to where I want to know what's going on in the world. Maybe I should quit listening to all of them so much and get down on my knees and try to hear the voice of the living God. Now they may have wonderful things to say and great insight to give. Maybe I need to quit looking to CNN and Fox News and MSNBC and begin to look into the pages of the Holy Bible. Because it's got a message for us. That's truth. And it's relevant because it's true. It's not relevant because it tells us what we want to hear. It's relevant because it's true. It's the truth. It's the way. It shows us the way of the real, true, eternal life that's available in Jesus Christ. So I guess my prayer, if, if we want to fulfill this call of God for, as His people to seek His face, we need to start doing it. We need to work on getting prayer back in here first. We need to work on getting the Word back into the hearts and the minds of our kids. They're certainly not going to get it from the distant channel. They're going to get the direct opposite in many cases. Christy gets mad at me because I always mess up the programs. I'm going to quit here in just a couple minutes. I mess up the programs she likes to watch sometimes because I see these, these messages of propaganda in them. If you pay attention, you'll see them. The Disney Channel. I was watching the Sci-Fi Channel one time, and there was a movie on about this family, this crazy family, that were really crazy axe murderer type people. Guess what their religious faith was? Christian. That's how they were portrayed as Christian. That's how Christians portrayed a lot of times. Crazy, out of touch, bigoted, hateful. They're not going to get it from Disney. They're not going to get it, you know, we're not going to necessarily get it from Stephen A. Smith when he's talking about the Lakers and what was going on with the Lakers and how Mike Brown was fired. And all that's wonderful and good, but we need to maybe get back to the Word. Look into the Word of Scripture, the Word of God, and try to hear and seek God's voice to hear what God is saying. And we may not like it, but if it's true, we need to try to live into it. Our hope today is in the One who died for us and calls us to live for Him. That's where our hope will be found. Please stand as you're able. Altar's open. I think today would be a good day to have this altar full. Today would be a good day to see this altar full. It's up to you. It's a sign that we are going to begin to seek God's face. That we're going to listen for God's Boys. We're going to get all off of Facebook for a little bit and get on our face and get on our knees and seek the will of our God. Please stand as you're able and you're already standing. Page number 156. I love to tell the story. 